What's up everybody, welcome back to another video and in today's quick tip, we're going to be talking about modulation and it's kind of a little overview, um, nothing super crazy. Uh, Rick Bieto has some amazing videos on modulation if you're really uh, interested on in diving deep into those, but I kind of want to give you a really concise um, practical way to get from one key to another. So let's talk about uh, what modulation is. Modulation is um, the act of going from one tonality or a key to another. Now. There are easy ways to do it, and there are very seamless ways to do it versus more abrupt ways, right? And this really depends on the two tonalities in question. So if we're going from uh, like one key, like C major, for example, to one that's really closely related, like G major or F major, um, both G and F are very closely related to the key of C because G major has one sharp while F major has one flat and C major has zero. So any two keys on the circle of fifths that are right next to each other are considered very closely related. Now, going from one key to another um, in terms of closely related keys is super easy because um, those keys will share uh, quite a few common chords. Okay, so for example, in the key of C major, you have uh, a chord like C major, which is the one chord in C major, whereas the in G major, the C major chord is the fourth chord, right? So you can always go from C major to G major very easily by using, um, you know, by using one of those chords as like a pivot chord. So for example, if I'm in the key of C, right, and let's say I have this really common progression, a common chord progression. So now I'm on one, but I want to go to G major. Then I can think, okay, well C major is the four chord in G major. So what's a really common chord progression? Four five one. So in G major, four five one would be C major to D major to G major. So I could go, you know, I landed on one here in the key of C, but now I think of it as the four of G major, and then go to the five, and then we go to G. Right? And now we've successfully changed from one key to another just by using that common chord uh, as a pivot chord, the C major. Um, so that's, that's kind of by, uh, by using a pivot chord and using a chord that's common between both keys. Um, for ones that are a little bit more uh, farther apart, you know, <clears throat> you can directly just use the second, uh, the, the dominant chord of the new key to lead you into that new key. For example, if we're going from C major to uh, E major, from zero sharps to four sharps, then I might try something like this. C major, um, the five seven of, E major, which is B7, going to E major, like that. Uh, you, you can try to find chords that, uh, you know, make, make the process as seamless as possible. So just before the 5-7 of E major, you might want to try a chord that kind of has similar notes as the chord of, uh, of, of the dominant seventh chord. So for example, if I know my chord is going to be B7, then maybe I can do something like the 2 chord. Because the two chord has is basically a D minor chord, and then if I go up in my right hand, D goes up to D sharp, then it's a good opportunity for me to use the B7 chord because B7 has the D sharp in there, and then and then I can go to E major that way, right? So if neither, uh, sorry, if um, neither key has a common chord in relation to each other that that is shared in common, then you can find um, a way to set it up so that the first key leads you nicely away from one, but when you transition to the chord of the new key, it doesn't sound all that abrupt because you want to try to find chords that are somewhat similar in, in construction. And another option, one more option I'll, I'll talk about is um, going straight to it um, without any pivot chord whatsoever, okay? And so, uh, so for example, in pop songs, sometimes a lot of them will go to the new key at the end of a bridge, and then the chorus will just immediately begin in that new key. And then it gives you that elevated sense of happiness and hope. Um, it's usually meant for songs that are a little bit more upbeat in nature. So let's say if we're in the key of um, G major, and we're trying to go to the key of B or something. So we got this um, six, four, five, and then, now we're in the key of B. And a lot of this is dependent on how the melody works as well, and there's a lot of voice leading uh, tricks in there as well. But um, really, any any 
uh, modulation can work. It really just uh, depends on the effect you want the listener to hear. So if you want a more abrupt thing, then you can consider going from one key to a completely unrelated key. Um, but personally, if I if I want to keep something seamless and smooth, then most likely I'll choose keys that are somewhat related. Maybe they're two positions away on the circle of fifths, maybe even three, but most likely um, if they're one away from each other, using a diatonic uh, pivot chord is very, very common. And uh, yeah, classical composers did this quite a bit um, and it's still used to this day. But yeah, it's just a very quick overview of what I think about modulation. Uh, you know, like I mentioned, I'll watch Rick Beato's videos. He has a very, very good explanation on it uh, in multiple videos. So uh, check those out. In any case, thank you so much for watching. Hope that helped a little bit and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.